Your Hard Rock Canucks CS 2014 coverage is brought to you by NCIX.com. Technology connected. Hey guys, I'm Dimitri and this is Matt and we are here in Vegas as you can see behind us, a nice beautiful Boca uh, with all these shining lights. It's my first time in Vegas, I'm very excited to see uh, what CES has uh, to bring to, to 2014. Yep. So Matt, uh, what are some of the trends that we are expected to see uh, at CS 2014. You know, one of the things that I'm really excited for is I think this is going to be the first year that we're really going to see the proliferation of mobile tech or wearable tech. So I think we're going to see a lot of like active wristbands. We're going to get a lot of companies like I think LG is rumored to be launching some sort of like a smartwatch that'll be sort of like a sports utility, but also have like the um, an improvement on what the Samsung Gear should have been. Um, plus, I wouldn't be surprised to see another Samsung gear hit the ground. Um, there's going to be quite a bit of exciting news coming from mobile displays as well as standard displays. So standard displays, uh, so 4K, we're talking about 4K? I, I think that what? we're going to be seeing a lot of more consumer grade, aka affordable 4K displays, 4K monitors. Yeah. Whether it be like a, a brand new TV or a 20 inch uh, LED panel. Yeah, 4K right now is a little bit iffy in terms of refresh rate. So there's some cheaper, or say, let's say, consumer level uh, 4K televisions available, but they're only at 30 hertz, uh, yeah. which is uh, you know a lot of uh, this would not be suitable for gaming in any way. For TV viewing, this would be might be okay, but you know if, if you're into sports and viewing all that, um, it's not uh, to that level. Also, I think we're seeing 4K to like you said to be become more popular since. Uh, 4K content is now becoming more available. So I think Netflix starts to stream in yep. uh, 4K now. So there is now more content for 4K. And uh, exactly like we said a year ago from a previous show that uh, 4K is now emerging into the market. Uh, what else are we uh, excited another, to see? Another really cool thing coming out is uh, actually, you know what? Here's what I like to call a teaser. There's some stuff coming out from AMD and Nvidia. Let's go and find out what. All right, guys, so now I'm here with Sam. You guys uh, probably remember him from Computex last year. He was my uh, co-buddy slash cameraman slash reporter. Uh, so he is our previous news editor for Harvard Canucks. Now he's moved on to VR Zone. Uh, so you last time we saw him, you were in Taipei and you stayed in Taipei. I didn't leave. It was so good I couldn't leave. Yeah, well, looks like uh, it's, it is it is a lot of fun. Anybody who's got a chance to visit. So AMD and NVIDIA are here at CES. We are about to see something very major from AMD. This is their Kaveri APU, their latest APU integrating uh, HSA, which is heterogeneous system architecture. So are you excited about uh, Kaveri APU and what are we to see this moving forward? I'm curious, not excited. The big question is, will HSA bring gamers and uh, most users a noticeable increase in performance? You know, AMD has spent a ton of money putting together the HSA Foundation and getting people on board with HSA. The question is now, will it work? Mm -hmm. So, Kaveri has been delayed uh, at Computex and at CES last year. They promised Kaveri would be out in 2013. Now we're at 2014 and still no Kaveri. So, despite, Kaveri? despite promises from Lisa Sue at Computex of a late 2013 launch, it'll now be launched probably next month or in March. Mm -hmm. um, and so, NVIDIA is launching Logan, or sort of we're going to be seeing Logan, which is the Tegra 5, uh, their uh, uh, SOC. Is this going to be a response towards Kaveri, or is this something different? I would say no. Tegra is more designed for mobile applications, so smartphones and tablets. There are some OEMs like HP who want to create Tegra-powered all-on PCs, but the market does not really have an appetite for that. Mm -hmm. um, with a Tegra chip in a PC, you cannot run usual applications. Uh, so you couldn't run Windows or your favorite apps. Um, like with the Surface, people got the Surface, it ran Windows, but it wouldn't run the regular apps because it was ARM-based. Yeah. Tegra is also ARM-based, mm -hmm. and it can't run the x86 apps. Now, the question is, you know, why Tegra 5? Tegra 4 came out at uh, CES last year, but OEMs were not excited about that. I mean, I can name perhaps a handful of devices that yeah, use Tegra. Tegra 4. Exactly, right? None of these are big devices. You got the new Tegra tablet, some stuff from Toshiba and Asus, but nothing really groundbreaking. Aside from the Shield. Exactly, right? But Which again, was NVIDIA thing, so. Precisely, yeah. So the question is, Tegra 5, what's the point, right? Why are they putting this effort into launching in a chip that perhaps no one wants? Mm -hmm. uh, well, thanks uh, your, for your insight, Sam. Uh, 
exactly what we are to see for the NVIDIA and AMD. It's, uh, it's about to come and see us. Very excited to see. So thanks, Sam, for joining us here at Hero Canucks. Thank you. All right, so guys, uh, we are super excited for CES 2014. We'll be visiting a ton of vendors, uh, all really excited to see what they have uh, in stock on the shelves for 2014. So make sure to subscribe and follow us on Twitter and uh, to see exactly where we'll be, perhaps meet us as well. And we'll see you guys on the show floor uh, for the rest of the CES 2014 coverage. Recording. You want to clap? Let's see you clap. <laughs> <laughs> It's a man's cloud.